The Nike Free Metcon 6. So this video is going to be more of an overview video and a first impressions video. I'll talk about the sizing and I'll also compare this shoe to the Nike Free Metcon 5 in this video. I will have a full review coming out in the future, but I know not everybody wants to wait for that. So I wanted to put this video out in the meantime to kind of go over the nuts and bolts of the shoe and give you a first look at them. Now, this shoe has been an emotional roller coaster. It started out way high and my hopes and dreams with this model have kind of dashed and I'll explain why throughout my first impressions. But my first thought with this shoe is if you liked the older Nike Free Metcon models, I think you will enjoy and resonate with the shoe's fit. So with this model, you don't have as aggressive as an arch as you had with the four and five. It also has a slightly like wider platform. So I was a big fan of the original Nike Free Metcon model. This model I think to date is the most similar feeling shoe to that iteration. Ironic that I like the first model the best and not the other iterations where they improved and innovated on them because I thought the, the first model was the best regarding comfort and performance. And this model feels very similar when it comes to its on-foot feel and with its midsole and how comfortable it is. My second first impression and second thought with this shoe is I do like the reworked midsole when it comes to the width of the forefoot and the material. The midsole in this shoe is a little bit more plush and a little bit more bouncy. This would not be a shoe that I use for heavier strength work and heavier power work. Like, could you use them for that? Sure, but just because you can doesn't mean you should. I would rather not train it super heavy in this shoe because it's just so plush that I would rather say it's gonna give me more stability and proprioception through the ground. But all that said, why I like this midsole is its bounce and its flexibility. Plus they reworked this heel. So you no longer have that horse hoof like heel that you had in the four and five. You have a little bit of a beveling. This heel is a little bit softer. And throughout the midfoot and forefoot, this midsole is very plush. So it feels really good for jump rope, box jumps and sprinting. So I really do like that feature of this model. And I think it's gonna be a great option for cross training classes and hit focus workouts for most folks. Now my third thought with this shoe, and this is something where I'm almost like torn on sharing this because I'm hoping it's just a one-off case, but with the flex here in the forefoot, I'm already starting to have my foam midsole tear, which is a big bummer. And I'm curious if that's because we do have a softer, more plush midsole in the shoe. And with this rubber, it's a bit more aggressive. So when really digging into the forefoot and sprinting and doing any form of advanced plyo like broad jumps or even doing heavier sled work, maybe that's causing this to split because of the force and pressure. But in both models, I'm having this foam start to tear here. It's a little bit more aggressive in my left shoe here. I'm trying to find the exact spot. Yeah, right here. It's pretty dang aggressive down here at the base of the forefoot and the midfoot. And so at all that said, I actually had a first impressions video filmed in the shoe, really hyping this model up. But then after my second workout, I started to notice that both shoes were starting to tear the left more than the right, but the right is now starting to tear and catch up. So all that said, if you do invest in the shoe and I will be sure to get another model and test it to make sure this is just a one-off case. If you do invest though, definitely keep an eye on that. And if it does tear on you, try to get that replaced and refunded because that should fall under warranty. In no world should a $120 shoe break after two workouts. It just doesn't make any sense. And I really hope it's not an oversight on Nike's end when it comes to this flexibility through the forefoot, but then putting this really aggressive rubber and having a very soft foam because that's a recipe for disaster when it comes to just understanding how force is going to work on the foot when you're driving through the forefoot with weight and whatnot. So all that said, that has been where I've been really bummed with this model. My fourth thought with this shoe is if you want a shoe for daily wear and walking, this model is really comfortable. The upper in this shoe hugs the foot pretty well, but it also has a decent level of breathability and it's just very comfortable to wear out and about. I have really enjoyed this shoe for my running workouts. So any form of hybrid workout where I was doing any form of sprint to lift, I really enjoyed this model. I've also enjoyed them for my longer dog walks. And with this heel, it doesn't feel as uncomfortable. It feels a little bit more natural and it does have a tiny bit more flex to it. It's not the most flexible heel in the game, but it does have more flexibility than the Nike Free Metcon 4 and 5 did. Plus you do have lateral and medial sidewalls here to give you additional support when it comes to lateral movement in this model. And it gives you additional ankle support. So if that's something you're after as well, when it comes to comfort, that's where I think the shoe can excel. My fifth thought with this shoe is the upper construction and booty style construction. Now, maybe this is just a me thing and maybe I just don't understand how shoes work, but if you have a sweatier foot or a high instep or a thicker foot, this can be kind of a pain to get on and off. You don't have a ton of flex here through the boot. So if you are somebody who is like me, who likes to take off their shoes post-workout for some stretching and then put them back on, if you forget like your Burks or whatever, your Crocs, et cetera, to the gym, that would definitely be something to consider with this shoe because it's one of those little tiny nuances where it can just kind of be annoying over time. But I will say what I do like is that they put the Nike Flywire back in through the five eyelets. That was something that got removed in the Free Metcon 4 and 5. 
I love the Flywire tech. It does help give you a little additional flexibility here. So with the laces, you can kind of set and forget them. And you're not gonna necessarily feel like this is too limiting, but also have a little bit of give. So I like that they added the Flywire back in. When it comes to sizing and fit, I think this model should be going true to size for most folks. I have an E to double E with foot and this model fits pretty dang true. I find that I have enough volume in the upper to give me enough room and it's wide enough for my foot anatomy. I also have a normal arch and this model feels pretty good with the midfoot. Now I will say, I think you will notice that there is a little bit of a midfoot in this shoe when it comes to the foam. It almost feels like your heel is sitting here and then it drops off pretty aggressively, almost like there's like a little hump in that midfoot. So if you have a flat foot, you might want to consider that, but it didn't necessarily bother me so I think for most folks you should be okay as well unless you just cannot stand any form of midfoot construction in your shoes. So now let's go over some construction differences between the Nike Free Metcon 5 and the Nike Free Metcon 6. So up here on the toe box you have an extended outsole layer that wraps up on both of these shoes. The outsole layer on the Free Metcon 5 is more biased towards the big toe versus on the Free Metcon 6 it's a little bit wider. I kind of like that because it gives you additional grip on the forefoot here. Looking at the upper constructions you have a synthetic overlay on on the Nike Free Metcon 6, it is a little bit more aggressive and it does give you a bit more rigidity and security compared to the Nike Free Metcon 5. This model's upper, it has that synthetic overlay, but it's very lightweight. Even on your first use with this model, it's very light in the sense of not giving you as much of a rigid feel and protection or support and security around the lateral and medial side of the forefoot as opposed to the Nike Free Metcon 6 here. Looking at the upper construction, you have this mesh and textile upper that runs through the entirety of the forefoot into the midfoot of the Nike Free Metcon 6. And then back here in the boot, you have a slightly thicker foam material and additional foam back here on the back of the boot for additional support. You also have a foam pad here for additional ankle support in the shoe as well. Looking at the Nike Free Metcon 5, you have that mesh upper that runs throughout the entirety of the shoe. It's very soft weight and it is very form fitting to the foot. You have synthetic overlays around the entirety of the lateral and medial midfoot and forefoot. And then back here in the heel, you have this TPU layer and then you also have a slightly more rigid boot cup. This boot can sometimes be a little bit uncomfortable for some folks. So I think Nike did make this boot a little bit more padded and soft soft for that reason. Looking at the midfoot, you have five core eyelets that go up in the Nike Free Metcon 6, and these eyelets do have the fly wire tech, which I personally love. That's a feature that I wish Nike would bring back in the Nike Metcon shoe line as well, but we could talk about that at another time. You have that booty style construction with tabs here on the tongue and the boot. Again, you don't have a ton of stretch here through the boot of this model, so that could be problematic for certain folks. And then looking at the Nike Free Metcon 5, you have this almost like pseudo-like boot construction, so you do have a small here in the tongue and the boot, but this tongue is not fully free floating. So it's almost like this in-betweener of a booty style shoe, but not a booty style shoe. You also have four core eyelets that go up in this model with more traditional eyelets. Looking at the midsole in the Nike Free Metcon 5, you have the Nike Free midsole that runs throughout. You also have a lateral medial sidewall here for additional support. And this midsole doesn't give you as much plushness as the Nike Free Metcon 6. In the Nike Free Metcon 6, this free midsole is a lot softer. So as you can see, that compresses a lot easier. But again, that kind of brings up the issue of potentially more splitting issues here, especially with this really rigid rubber outsole and just how flexy that forefoot is. You also have extended layers here on the lateral medial side for additional boot support. Looking at the outsole in this shoe, you have a full rubber tread for the most part. You do have brakes here in the forefoot, so you will have some exposed foam there. So if you are training a lot outdoors and doing cutting work, keep an eye on that. That's where you can have some friction here. You can also get rocks stuck in here, just like in the Nike Free Metcon 5. And you also have exposed foam here. On rainy or muddy days, I would say probably avoid wearing this shoe just so you don't get rain and mud stuck in these crevices because that can break the shoe down a little bit faster. In the Nike Free Metcon 5, you had a lot of exposed foam here in the midsole, which I never really loved. And then you also have pretty aggressive brakes where rocks could also get stuck in. Now, I did have some splitting issues in one of my models with the Nike Free Metcon 5, but not nearly as aggressive or as fast in the Free Metcon 6. And then you have rubber tread here on the heel and the forefoot. Looking at the midsoles, you have a thin foam removal insole in the Nike Free Metcon 5 and a thin foam removal insole in the Nike Free Metcon 6. If you have additional questions on either of these shoes, drop a comment down below. And if you're torn on which model to go with, I would say wait for my full review of the Nike Free Metcon 6 because I will have more built out thoughts on the performance of this shoe. But if you do want a model that's a little bit more dense for lifting, the Nike Free Metcon 5 can be a better bet. And then if you want a softer and more lightweight and bouncy shoe, the Free Metcon 6 can be a really good option. However, keep an eye on that durability if you do invest in this shoe before my full review comes out. All right guys, that wraps up my overview of the Nike Free Metcon 6. 
as I continue to test this model, I'm gonna keep really focusing on the forefoot here and seeing what's going on with this foam and exactly what movements and at what forces this is starting to tear because I obviously don't want you to invest in this shoe and have your model break really fast and have to go through the return process. It's just a pain in the butt. I'm also gonna get a second model and test them to see if I can replicate this issue and see if it's gonna be a normal thing or if it's just a, hopefully a one-off case with my pair. But all that said, if you have additional questions before I roll out my full review, drop a comment down below or reach out to me personally on Instagram, whichever you prefer. And as always, y'all, drop a like on the video, drop subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the next one.